Well, we're here to celebrate and crown the new king of queen of seafood for the national uh, seafood contest here in New Orleans. Uh, we have it every year. We have chefs from all over the country that come here. They bring their best dish of uh, domestic seafood to really highlight uh, their special flavor and try to bring home the, cr the crown to their state of king or queen of seafood. And uh, we're excited today to have chefs from all over the country here to participate in this competition. We're trying to highlight the, the fresh seafood out of the Gulf of Mexico and how it's the best in the world. And we're also trying to highlight those imports that are not inspected properly and bring new awareness to that to inspect more imported seafood to give our local fishermen a level playing ground. Uh, that people need to know that the seafood they eat is safe. And if you eat fresh Louisiana seafood out of the Gulf of Mexico, you know it's the best in the world. And we're highlighting that across the state and across the country to ask before you eat to make sure you're eating the best seafood in the world, Louisiana seafood. So we have 12 chefs from all over the country that are gonna be vying for the title of king or queen of American seafood. And we're gonna kick that off at noon and every 15 minutes we're gonna be starting another chef. Um, at 4.30, right here on this stage, we're gonna crown the next king or queen of American seafood. Five, four, three, two, and one. Competitor in the 15th annual Great American Seafood Cook-Off. Ever since I was a little boy, three years old, I've, I've loved to be involved in food. Uh, my mother raised me in the South Bronx, New York City, and then we moved to Albuquerque, New Mexico um, when I was younger. So uh, New Mexico adopted me, and all my life um, I've cooked since I've known how to, how, to, how to walk and talk. What are you cooking today? Today we're doing uh, New Mexico spiced uh, duck fat fried oysters with a uh, chimayo red chili blackened uh, toast, a, a green chili from Hatch, New Mexico, and chorizo ragu, with uh, arugula and preserved lemon salad to kind of cut against all that. Tell us uh, about the seafood opportunities in New Mexico. Well, in New Mexico, we are in landlocked, you know, so we have trout, um, catfish, things like that. So I wanted to, to feature oysters today. Um, from the Pacific Northwest, they're fantastic. And I want to show the entire world that in New Mexico, we can source and we can bring in the very best seafood in the world and we can treat it with the same respect that they do here in Louisiana, uh, in Seattle, New York City, and, and we can present it in a way that's world class. What advice do you have for the chef at home? It's just about love. Love what you do, um, have soul. Um, and if you bring love and soul to the dish every single time, you're gonna have a chance every single time if you bring that to the table. I want to tell you a story about who I am. I was born and raised in the South Bronx, New York City. Uh, single mother, uh, she was 14 when she had me. Um, we're Puerto Rican by culture. And um, it was always a special time when we could afford seafood. You know, a lot of pork, a lot of roasted pork, rice and beans, um, chicken, things like that. Um, we knew it was gonna be a really special day when the music was going on in the morning and mom was gonna go buy some seafood over at the market. Um, so it's always been uh, very passionate in my heart uh, thinking about seafood. Um, when I was 13 years old, we got a phone call that my grandfather was living in Albuquerque, New Mexico, uh, and he was terminally ill. So we moved to New Mexico where they adopted us, and I've pretty much been there ever since, um, and that's kind of where, where I became a chef was in New Mexico. Well, I've been in the restaurant business for about uh, 26, 27 years almost, and uh, we're located in Jackson, Mississippi. Uh, my restaurant's called uh, Lou's Full Serve. Um, it's kind of a Southern Plus is what I like to call it, restaurant. Uh, you know, Semi, semi form, not as casual, fine dining, if you will. You know, just good local food. What are you cooking up today? Uh, we've got some Mississippi caught uh, red redfish um, with some local board chanterelle mushrooms and like a spring vegetable salad or spring salad. What's it like cooking with Mississippi seafood? Um, it's great. I mean, it's a good bit available, but from from oysters to blue crab, redfish, catfish. Um, you know, it's 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 all good, and people people really love seafood in our area. And it's uh, you know, our redfish that we sell at the restaurant is our number one seller. You know, we seventy to hundred pounds a week. What uh, tips do you have for the chef at home when it comes to cooking with seafood? Um, just take good care of it and buy good quality seafood, anything from the Gulf, anything local, you know, avoid the, the imported stuff. None of it's really tested, you know, so we like to use anything we know where it comes from that's traceable, you know, and if it's farmed, sustainable. What's it like uh, competing in a contest like this as opposed to cooking at your restaurant? Um, I mean, it's, it's similar. I mean, you're, you're always on a timeline and you've always got, you know, set goals and schedules to make. Uh, this to me is just, you know, like another shift real quick, you know, just a few plates and, you know, knock it out and see what happens. 
What this dish to me embodies is kind of what we do at the restaurant, Mississippi caught redfish, Mississippi tomatoes from Good Dirt Farms and Wells Neeld. We forged the mushrooms. We cured and aged the ham for two years that's shaved on the plate in the peach tendril salad. Um, you know, it was just, it's all about our love for food and what we like to do. And, you know, I couldn't do it every day without my guys, especially Hunter. Um, and we just appreciate it. You know, thank y'all. I've been an executive chef for 10 years now, and I'm currently the chef at The Real House in East Boston, Massachusetts. Tell us, what are you cooking up here today? We are representing one of the better dishes from that Cape Cod has to offer, which is a traditional clam bake. It's going to have butter poached lobster, some clams and mussel, a little bit of potato, all served in a surf clam shell. It's going to be really spectacular. How long have you been cooking uh, seafood? Um, 20 years. I'm from Boston, so seafood's a way of life for us. What kind of seafood opportunities are there in Massachusetts? There's plenty. We have um, some of the best seafood that the world has to offer, so you name it, we probably have a lobster, black bass, fluke, all sorts of shellfish, all sorts of oysters. Thank you, Island Creek. Um, thank you, Sunnies. Thank you, Captain Martin. So we're just chock full of uh, beautiful ingredients. What's the secret to uh, winning a competition like this? I think keeping it simple, creative, and most of all tasty gets you far away. It's all about um, transforming you somewhere else. So this is a clam bake that you have on the beach in uh, Cape Cod. I love clam bake. My favorite part of the clam bake is the juice from all the awesome shellfish. All of our seafood is locally sourced. Cape Cod, Gloucester, um, Nantucket, Vineyard. So this is, we did a deconstructed um, clam bake and we're burning a little bit of hickory and a mini lobster trap on the bottom. My parents loved to cook as a young kid and they had a restaurant and so it's kind of like been in my blood for a long time and uh, I just realized I'm actually good at something in this life so I just continued on with it. Where are you cooking right now? Uh, I own a Vita Cantina in Portsmouth, New Hampshire. Tell us about the seafood in New Hampshire. Uh, the seafood is, uh, we have so many underutilized uh, sustainable fish along the coast of New Hampshire, uh, up to Maine and down to Mass, obviously. Uh, and there's amazing product that just comes out from local fishermen. What are you cooking today? Uh, we're using uh, local cod and lobster. How did you get uh, inspired for this dish? You know, uh, we have so many, we, we use cod and lobster uh, quite often at the restaurant and it's just, you know, it kind of, we started with that and f figured out what the cooking technique behind it was going to be and then after that the dish chef, really came to us. Chef. Your advice for the chef at home? Have fun, put on music and just dance around. Welcome to New Hampshire. Um, what we have here is sous vide cod. Uh, local lobster that's picked up in an Epizote Bermonte. We work locally with uh, New Hampshire Community Seafood, which is a CSF, which is a community supported fisheries program in, on the seacoast of New Hampshire. We buy into it. The local fishermen just bring us whatever they catch, and this is what represents New Hampshire right here. My mom actually taught me how to cook when she went back to work, and I started cooking from there and continued. And then I Got a job, started as a dishwasher, put myself to college cooking, and then, uh, yeah, I'm five restaurants deep now of my own. Um, but yeah, it's, it's been a good ride. What are you cooking today? Uh, we're doing, we're Indiana, right? So we're doing a dish of corn. It's like a rift on a corn chowder, very classic Indiana dish. Uh, we're gonna puree it deconstruct a little bit, uh, do some crispy, crispy bacon lardons, some uh, fingerling potatoes, and then we're doing walleye, farm-raised uh, saltwater prawns, and uh, crawfish, and like a corn relish. Um, it's gonna be delicious. I wanted to do something that was gonna reflect our state in totality. So everything on your plate, uh, for the most part, has come from the farm. So uh, we farm raised Pacific white shrimp. Uh, RDM is uh, doing some great things. Um, we have uh, crawfish that are also from RDM. And then on top of that is some Great Lakes walleye. So we wanted to do a completely Midwest flavor profile. Everything that we do in Indiana basically affects the Gulf. And so one way or the other, it all runs downstream. And so we're trying to feature, like I was in the, creation of this plate, I wanted to feature that idea that, you know, 
we're all one team, kind of. We're all working together for the same thing. I grew up cooking my entire life. That's all I've really known. That's all I've done. I was born and raised in a barbecue restaurant down in Alabama. Um, and now I'm in Alaska cooking at my restaurant. It's called Kincaid Grill. What's it like cooking with Alaska seafood? Oh, it's wonderful. It's one of the best products, you know. Like, I'm, I'm super blessed to have the, the availability that we do with the seafood that we have. What are you cooking today? Today I'm going to cook a king salmon with some buckwheat soba noodles, uh, rhubarb ponzu foam, and uh, uh, shiitake mushroom puree. What's the inspiration for this dish? Uh, the inspiration is pretty much based off of the, um, the diversity that we have in Anchorage population. Um, it's, you know, it's kind of inspired by some Japanese flavors. So uh, it's, I've just taken that and tried to apply that to the Alaska seafood. What's the trick to winning a competition like this? Uh, I think have fun. Um, you know, don't, don't take yourself too seriously and just try to, try to enjoy the time that you, you spent cooking. Hey, I'm super happy to be standing here today um, representing Alaska and uh, promoting Alaskan seafood as well. What, what I prepared for you today was a king salmon uh, seared with the skin on. I wanted to bring some of these like saltiness, some of the flavors of the sea to this dish. I first got interested in cooking. My family owns a 50s diner in Crowley, Louisiana. It's been in my family for 60 years. Um, I cut my teeth there, learned how to learned all the basic basic techniques behind cooking, and uh, grew a passion for it. Went to college at UL, got my business degree, and decided to get into restaurants. Yes, sir. You are the king of Louisiana seafood. Yes, sir. I am the king of Louisiana seafood. So two months ago, we won the Lasco event, which is the Louisiana seafood cook-off, and I'm the executive chef at Blue Dog Cafe in Lafayette. What are you cooking today? Um, we're cooking a crackling crusted red snapper, which is a red snapper that we cook with the scales on it. Uh, they turn into chips to where you can eat them um, with a buttermilk ancho chili broth, some creme fraiche, a spring vegetable salad, pickled crawfish tails, uh, burnt leek oil, and shoe pig caviar. How'd you come up with the idea for this dish? Um, I wanted it to be a representation of what modern day Acadiana is and with the influx of immigration um, from from Mexico and also the Vietnamese population, I wanted to kind of just do a riff on the fresh vegetables, the chili infusion, and the fresh seafood that we have available for us in Louisiana. As king of Louisiana seafood, what's the trick to uh, winning this competition and being king of American seafood? I, I think just coming out, having fun, and cooking a good dish. I'm from Lafayette, Louisiana. That's where I cook. And I think what people know of Cajun country is all smothered in fried food. And in recent years, with the immigration and things that have been going there, that we're kind of moving away from that. We have a we have a high Hispanic population, a high Vietnamese population, so we do have those Hispanic and Asian influences. And since I am a younger chef from the area, I wanted to give a nod to the modern day take on Acadiana cuisine. I've been a chef for around 20 years. Um, I started when I was around 18 um, at the University of Alabama, where I was playing football. I was kind of needed some money, so I actually was doing that on the side. And also, I grew up in Bayla Batchery, the South Alabama, uh, where they do the shrimping, the oystering, the crab meat, and I, my family was in, in that kind of business. So I was involved in unloading boats, various, act, you know, doing oysters also. I mean, I kind of grew up in the business. Like, like that was my passion because I knew what it were. And I still, to this day, where all that comes from, I get that every day in Birmingham, where I live now. And that's where the restaurant is in Birmingham, Alabama. So all the product that we get to this day comes from Bayla Battery. So I started doing that, basically. Okay, good. Tell us, what are you cooking up here today? Today we're having a dish composed of yellow edge grouper, which is one of my favorite groupers. Um, underneath that would be a, a new skis, or smoked bacon. We're having chayote squash on that. And we're also having a royal red, which is a deep water fit, uh, shrimp, excuse me. One of my favorite shrimps, kind of, kind of a lobster quality. That's a royal red ceviche. And we're gonna to top that with a tempura stuffed uh, jumbo lump crab in the, in the squash blossom itself. And that'll be on like a, on top of that. And a little salsa verde to coat the plate. What's your favorite thing about cooking with uh, seafood? I mean, just the variety you can get in seafood. I mean, it's kind of, to me, it's the best thing in the world because it's healthy and there's, there's a lot of like different varieties that you can play with. You can always mix it with things that make it like, perfect for your palate. I mean, it's very adjustable. And I just, I just love it because it's in my blood. And I just, every day I, always, I wake up thinking about seafood and that's my life basically. So that's why I like to do it. Where I grew up, people, that's what they did for a living. 
They caught fish, caught shrimp, caught oysters, crab, and it's a hard way of life. And the guys and ladies that all do that, it's amazing what the kind of people they are. They're, they're salt of the earth kind of guys and girls, and they don't play. And every day they get up and go back to work, and they have one of the hardest jobs in the world because sometimes the weather kills them. Sometimes you can't make a living, and then you can't eat some, but you can always eat seafood if you live in the Bila Battery area because there's always seafood on your doorstep. So that's what I love about it because we always think about food constantly. So even like, the, like you were saying earlier, you wake up thinking about breakfast, lunch, dinner, and then you wake up in the morning again thinking about food again. So, and then we start over. Hey, my mom and dad uh, were restaurant families here in New Orleans on Chapatula Street and on Magazine, and I've always loved to cook. And so that's how I, that's kind of how I got into it. I was a teacher for 25 years in Crowley, Louisiana, and decided to retire and open a restaurant. So I moved to Fayetteville, Arkansas, and I own Cafe Rue Orleans. What's it like cooking with Arkansas seafood as opposed to Louisiana seafood? Well, Arkansas has some farm-raised shrimp that are pretty good. They have a lot of good Arkansas catfish. And so we make it work, lots of different fish. What are you cooking today? I'm cooking catfish chapatulas in honor of my mom. She was born and raised on Chapatula Street. It's a, it's a favorite at my restaurant. It's a catfish filet. It's stuffed with uh, lump crab meat and traditional New Orleans stuffing. It's battered, it's fried. Then we top it with a seafood cream sauce with tasso and shrimp and crab meat. And it is good. What is your advice for the chef at home? The chef at home is just jump in and do it. Um, if you can read, I think you can cook. You follow a recipe, just, just do it. I can tell you that everything on that plate represents either Louisiana or Arkansas. This is what we do every day. I love to feed people. Uh, it's, it's in my family. My mom and dad are, were food people here in town. They're, they're parents, grandparents. So this is it on the plate. So I got started cooking when I was young, and um, I was the youngest of three, so I cooked with my mom, and everyone else was busy running around, so I got stuck making dinner, and uh, it turned into a career for me, so it kind of worked out well. Where are you a chef now? I'm a chef at uh, Marina Cantina Restaurant for the Baystar Restaurant Group in uh, Clearwater Beach, Florida, and we do uh, like modern Spanish fusion food. So. What are you cooking here today? Today we are doing hog snapper with uh, chicharron crust. Uh, it's going to have some sautéed fingerling potatoes, oyster mushrooms, uh, jumbo lump crab meat from Louisiana, and a uh, nice little habanero lobster beurre blanc. How'd you come up with the idea for this dish? It's, uh, I mean, hogfish is a very good fish from where we live at, a uh, very clear water Florida fish, and um, it's just a dish we've done before in the past, and it works out well, and everything we have kind of goes, and besides, it's all for the fish for the most part. What's the key to success in winning a competition like this? Just execution. If you can execute everything properly and have uh, ideally the, the mo not necessarily the most creative, but be a little creative and uh, just nail everything where you can. What we have for you today is a chicharron crusted hogfish. My sous chef actually went out and caught it two days ago. We've had some rush, well, rough weather in Florida, so grouper fishing wasn't uh, able to happen. He caught it right off the coast of Clearwater Beach. Uh, with that, we have some sautéed fingerling potatoes, oyster mushrooms, spinach, jumbo lump crab meat, and some roasted purple cauliflower. I am a chef at Vidalia's Restaurant in Myrtle Beach. Uh, we are in a, the Sheraton Hotel Convention Center. And uh, how I got interested in seafood is my cousin was a chef when I was a child. And uh, he used to take me all over San Francisco where he worked, and he would feed me things that I'd never had before. You know, he'd feed me raw clams and oysters and mussels and fish, and I, I was just blown away by it and I had to be a chef. I had to be. So at 16 years old I started and I'm 48 now. I've been doing this for 30 something years. I've been cooking seafood as the starter of my career and I've been doing it ever since. I love seafood more than anything in this world. Uh, today we're going to do a salmon dish, a sustainable salmon dish and my love for salmon came from actually San Francisco as a fisherman. We used to go out under the Golden Gate Bridge and catch fish and uh, catch king salmon and, and Oh, how wonderful fresh king salmon out of the water is. So now we have a sustainable Atlantic salmon we're going to do today, and uh, it's going to be amazing. What advice do you have to the chef at home? Oh, be adventurous. Always go sustainable. Check it out. Keep your oceans fresh. Uh, the reason we do sustainable is so that we can keep all these fish for our children's children. You know, we got we got to keep 
all of our environment going. So if we start outfishing what we need to outfish, ask your fishmonger if it's sustainable, make sure it's the freshest possible fish you can, because me and my sous chef here, Colliston, we are gonna do something that uh, hadn't been done before here in the uh, challenge. We're gonna serve it raw. We got the freshest, freshest fish you can possibly have, and we're gonna do it raw. We're not even gonna cook today. We have a Atlantic salmon with a passion fruit sauce. I have a little influence in Peruvian food, so I bring some Peruvian chilies with me. And I have an Amarillo yellow chili that I put in the sauce. I got a lime. I added a little bit of ricotta oil for color. I added a little bit of cilantro oil for color so we can have a little Picasso going on. You know, make it real pretty. All yellow, green, and red. I've been cooking for only about 12 years. Um, I'm originally from Canada. I used to play hockey before I was a cook. Um, I moved to Texas, I went to business school. It didn't work out for me, so I decided to go to culinary school, and well, thank God things have worked out. Tell us about uh, what you're cooking today. We have a fried rice dish we do at the restaurant, um, kind of seasonally. So it's shrimp season, we're doing shrimp right now. So it's um, we overcook some rice, dry it out, um, toss it in rice flour, and actually fry it. So it's actually a real uh, fried rice. What's the best thing about cooking with seafood? You know, I love seafood. I grew up from, I said from Canada, I grew up kind of landlocked from Manitoba. So we didn't get a lot of seafood up there. So, um, you know, any chance I get to cook with seafood, I do. What's your advice for the chef back home? I think just keep things simple and have a balanced dish, you know. This is our take on um, shrimp fried rice. So what we do is we get some rice, we overcook it a little bit, dry it out, toss it in rice flour, and, um, and actually fry it. So I'd actually, like, before you eat it, I would mix it up. I don't like telling people how to eat, but um, this one, you can maybe mix it up. So it's, it's um, finished with a little bit of um, raw um, squash. There's some more shrimp in there. There's like a ginger vinaigrette that's mixed on it. There's some herbs and um, some egg yolk, like you'd eat with the fried egg on, um, um, with your fried rice, so enjoy. To all the chefs, Thank you all for being here in New Orleans, Louisiana, and, and promoting our great domestic seafood. And I want to give a special shout out to my friend, the Lieutenant Governor from Arkansas, Tim Griffin. Thank you for being here to support your home state. So, and may the best chef win, but in my book, y'all all are winners. Thank you, and God bless you. Third place. And the great American seafood dude. Cook -off. Man, five hours have led to this, guys. Come on, man. Y'all excited or what, baby? Let's go. All right. In an unprecedented repeat, Mark Quinones from New Mexico hey, is third up, place. Congrats, wow, I, we can all agree, probably the most passionate chef we've ever seen in 15 years no here doubt. at this cook off. I'm telling you. And I'm going to tell you guys something else. It's not just me that's saying this, but I was talking to one of our judges, and I was saying, you know, what do you think about this competition? What would you say about it, Brian? This by far was the best year yet. So with, with that being said, to repeat at third place is probably an amazing feat there, sir. There you go. Congratulations. Second place. Uh-oh, they sealed the envelope and they everything. Did, they man. did, they did, they did. <laughs> Arthur Anderson came in. Mark Orfley Mark. from Massachusetts. Mark. Mark. Got that clam bake special. That a baby, Mark. Go ahead, man. Congratulations to Massachusetts for that second place finish. Beautiful dish. There you go. All right, so we have a little tradition here uh -oh. at the Great American Seafood Cook-Off. Nell Udipa is our current king of American seafood from the state of Alaska right here, y'all. Y'all give him a huge hand. All right, so what happens when we announce the winner, they got to take a knee and be crowned by the current king. We got to pass it down, all right? Who's got that envelope? Y'all ready for this? Oh, I don't even know. Come on, baby. Hey, man, let's go. Wake it up one more time, baby. Come on. Yeah, come on. It's the best, man. Ooh, I got goosebumps. <laughs> Chef Ryan Trahan, Pluto Cafe.
What went through your mind when they called out your name as the winner? Um, it went blank. So, I mean, we're honored to be here. We're honored to cook, and we're happy to get the showcase to everybody what we can do with our great seafood in Louisiana. From king of Louisiana seafood to king of American seafood in one year. Oh, yes, sir. It's a, it's a big feat, but I'm, I'm happy we get, to, we get to support our state, and we're looking forward to showcasing it. I'm, I'm just really psyched to be here. It's been tremendous. Twelve incredible chefs. It's just great. Um, competing alongside with everybody and New Orleans has been incredibly hospitable to us and it's just been an amazing time. Just so honored to be here, you know, it's a great honor to be here and represent New Mexico um, on a national level and to make the podium for the second year in a row um, is a very big deal. I'm, I'm very happy um, and just very excited about it all, very thankful. Wow, uh, seven years, goosebumps to bring it home to Louisiana and with such a special team the Blue Dog Cafe, um, the, the legend of George Rodriguez and his family that carries on today, not only that great food that they produce at the cafe, but what they do for children and education across the state just adds to the excitement uh, to crown uh, uh, them the winner today with a great dish and, and all the great things the Blue Dog has brought to Louisiana. I'm so excited. Uh, to be able to use uh, this to promote Louisiana seafood around the country and around the world. We will have a great team going forward. What does it say about Louisiana seafood? Well, it says we're pretty darn good at what we do. And uh, although it's been a seven-year drought, it's great to have the, uh, the king back home here in Louisiana. Couldn't have gone to a finer group, um, well represented here. Louisiana. If people, if people have questions like more information, what should they do? They can go to LouisianaSeafood.com and uh, learn about the event where we pick the Louisiana King in Lafayette every year and then they compete against the rest of the country here in New Orleans. Look forward to being back next year.